So um, I looked about, about a little bit what's going on with the blood shortage and everything, um, and we've heard that the summer months are a specifically difficult time to collect blood. Can you tell us a little bit about why that happens? Yeah, unfortunately it is a very difficult time for us to collect blood and ensure an adequate supply <clears throat> to meet the needs of patients across the country. This summer is no different than previous summers, maybe a little more severe, but definitely no different from a shortage standpoint. There are really a couple of primary reasons why we struggle in the summer months. So first is people are busy, right? They're, they're enjoying vacations. We just came off the 4th of July holiday, a lot less access to donors, people um, busy and maybe forget about uh, donating blood. But that kind of happens all summer long where people are enjoying their, themselves and taking vacations. So that's one reason. But probably the bigger reason why we struggle in the summer months is about 20% of our blood donations annually come from students in high schools and colleges. That's a pretty big percentage. And uh, during the summer months, we lo lose access to those donors. So it just puts a pretty big dent in our available donor base during the summer months. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, how um, severe is the current blood shortage right now? Well, it's quite severe. We've issued an emergency call for blood donations across the country, and we're asking people to come in now, participate, roll up their sleeves, and donate uh, as soon as they can. Over the last several weeks or the last couple of months, we've collected about 40,000 units less than our hospitals have requested from us. We service over 2,500 hospitals across the country, so um, we've really used mu up most of our available inventory to meet that need since we've uh, undercollected during that time frame. So our inventories are critically low, and we need to replenish those as soon as we can. Yeah, definitely. And why is it so important to have a readily available blood supply? Yeah, we've had far too many examples in the recent days, weeks, and months of you know traumatic need by patients, whether it be Orlando, whether it be Dallas, whether it be Michigan. So we have those types of needs, but we also have you know, everyday needs of patients. So somebody's going through cancer treatment, somebody getting a transplant uh, who's been waiting for a transplant for a long time, sickle cell patient who's in sickle cell crisis, uh, or somebody who just needs blood chronically for other reasons. When they show up at the hospital to get their blood transfusion, they need it now, and we can't wait for blood to be collected, processed, and distributed. So it's the blood that's on the shelf at the time of those emergencies that really help those individuals and that's why we need blood donors to become regular blood donors. We need them to, to show up at our donation centers and our mobile operations whenever they're eligible and participate in the process and do it multiple times a year. Right. Now, a lot of people, you know, you think about things like that happened in Orlando and Dallas and, you know, people associate that with needing to give blood. But is there like a percentage of people who need it on like a weekly or monthly basis to where you could maybe give our readers more of a like statistic for that? Because I don't think people think of that as much, people who need it on a regular basis versus a crisis situation. Yeah, we need, we need to collect, the Red Cross needs to collect about 14,000 units every single day to meet the needs of hospital patients across the country. So... It is, uh, is way beyond you know, the, the, the need during those disaster situations. While those are important and critical and obviously they're very visible, you know, there's, there's thousands of individual you know, disasters and emergencies going on every day. You know, car, car accidents and, again, regular uh, surgical needs and cancer treatments. And, and those are the folks that are relying on the community and the public to meet their need and ensure that they have an adequate and safe available supply. So. Yeah, from a percentage standpoint, 14,000 units a day is a whole lot of blood, and we collect that today, and we'll need to do the same thing tomorrow, we'll need to do the same thing the next day. It's, the need is relentless, and you know, our, our goal as is, is the Red Cross is to ensure that we have and, and we ensure an adequate and safe supply for those patients that need it. Yeah, now during this shortage, um, I know you mentioned, you know, going to local centers and your pop-up, um, you know, things that kind of happen every so often, but how else can we help patients who need blood right now? Yeah, uh, that's a great question, Ashley. So uh, the primary way is to schedule an appointment to donate blood, and we try to make that really simple for people. We provide multiple channels to do that. If they are if they're like to go out on the web and, and do their business on the web, they can go to redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment to donate. If you prefer to use the phone, we have agents on online regularly 24 hours a day to take your phone call at 1-800-RED-CROSS. And if you're a person who likes to use apps, and I know there are a lot of people who do that now, we have an app for that as well at the Red Cross. It's the uh, Red Cross Blood Donation app. You can go out and get it from your, your favorite uh, uh, app store. And it really, we really make that process very simple. You can go out on the app. You can schedule your appointment. You can see where, where we have mobile operations near you. You can participate by uh, taking pictures of your donation process and using social media to post those and encourage others. And we would encourage everybody not just to donate themselves, but bring a friend, bring a family member, bring the neighbor, you know, bring anybody that you think uh, can help, help the cause. 
And then um, I know some people are more like visual. They're busy, like you said, it's summertime. So how long does it usually take when you give blood, when you go to donate? Yeah, it usually takes about an hour. Yeah, now sometimes in the summer it gets a little tighter because we, uh, we have more people coming in now through these types of events. But it usually takes about an hour, and again, we make that very simple. We, you know, it's, it's a pretty painless process. We do a short health history, make sure you're eligible and safe to donate. You get on the bed for about 10 minutes uh, to actually donate blood, and then we get you to the canteen where we give you those juice and cookies that everybody clamors for. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today, Chris, and I hope that, you know, this goes better. I definitely know that some of us blood mix are going to start donating here soon. Yeah, well, we appreciate that, and thank you for having me on, Ashley. Yeah, you have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.